Thanks again for tuning back into the channel and a big thank you for the 20,000 subscribers. I saw that last week just after posting last week's video it reached the 20,000 subscriber mark and it's something I never expected for the channel so I am really appreciative of it and thank you so much for giving me your valuable time for 8, 10, 12, 20 minutes per week. Thank you so much, it really does mean a lot. Back to this week's video. What we are going to be looking at this week is perhaps something that you've considered or perhaps something you've just not even thought about when it comes to your still image composites. Now it's something if you're a photographer that you will do with your photography and you'll look at different depth of field. Uh, you'll shoot at f2.8 for a shallow depth of field or you perhaps you'll photograph at f11 for full depth of field in your, field in your image. But have you ever thought about doing it with your still images, whether that's photographs, and this is in post, or with your composites? Now, it makes a massive difference to composites. It's something I didn't do a few years ago, and it's something that I do now with most of my composites, even if it is just subtly. If you consider scenes like the following from one of my favourite films, even in the chaotic battle scenes from The Edge of Tomorrow Live I Repeat, the area that the cinematographer and director wanted you to pay attention to is in sharp focus. The main characters, everything else is in shallow depth of field and just out of focus. They want you to pay attention to certain elements within the scene without being distracted by other elements. So can this be applied to your own images and composites? These images were originally created without that thought process and now I actually prefer the effect, especially with this one, from the depth of field bore. Now this can be done retrospectively, but if you have your documents with all the different layers, you can create smart objects with, from layers by right-clicking on them and it allows for non-destructive edits. Then you can go in and adjust the image accordingly to the depth of field that you want and with the intensity that you want. So you see how that can add impact to your image by drawing the viewer into a certain element within your image that you want them to look at and to pay attention to. You've done all these edits, you've created this amazing looking composite, but the viewer doesn't know where to look. And that is not a bad thing in any way at all, but perhaps you want to guide them just into that area that makes up the main character of your image and the supporting elements of it. So we're now going to dive straight into showing you how you can do that in post with composites. Just to let you see everything in place and everything except for the background layer is in relatively sharp focus, the dragon and all the flames. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the background layer and choose select subject and let Photoshop do its thing. From here it hasn't selected everything including the rocks so the next part of this is to choose the quick selection tool and go in and select the areas we want. Once we've got everything selected, it's simply Command or Control and J and copy up onto a new layer. And from here, I'm going to drag that to the top just to make life easier for this entire edit. As you can see, the dragon is completely sharp throughout and we need to send that dragon into the midground and create some depth of field in it. So in this instance we are going to go into the filter gallery and we're going to get into the blur gallery and we're going to choose field blur. Once that's selected a pin is dropped on the actual image or in this case the layer itself and it only affects that layer. So we want to add certain elements in here. We can take drop a pin and then we can adjust the pin to how much blur we want. Now you have to look throughout the image just to see how it's affecting the rest of the layer that you are using. And at times you may go in and adjust certain elements within it by adding new pins and just adjusting the blur. It doesn't have to be an even blur, but it has to visually for your image look okay and create that, in this case, a kind of mid 
depth of bore within a midfield of bore within your image. So you'll notice that I am adjusting these and perhaps adding more. And you can add more pins, but it's a good idea just to check, just to see how much of the rest of the image when you apply a bar or lessen a bar that it's affecting. Once you're happy with that, click OK and you'll notice that that has created a nice depth of field. I'm now correcting the actual background layer at the moment because in the bottom left hand corner it was too sharp and didn't work with the rest of the image. Once you're happy with your first edit, it's then time to go in and adjust the rest of the layers to match in how you think it works best for your entire image. Now this may mean creating a smart object so that you can go back and edit, and that's simply by right clicking on the layer and selecting smart object. Working this way allows you to go in and out of your image just to tweak it just to get the best results that you're after. Now it depends how many elements you have in your image and it's entirely up to you how much bore you add, but it's definitely worth testing this out to see if it makes an impact for your images. Although the select subject can be very precise, there is always artifacts, and most of the time there's always artifacts that you have to go in and just adjust manually. To do this, I created a mask on the layer of the Viking, and I'm now just going in with a black brush, soft round brush, to edit out any areas. So you can see the difference here between the images with the depth of field added it works really, really well and it allows you to highlight and create an extra depth of atmosphere within your image. This final image is slightly stretched just to fit the aspect ratio and it now has a lot added for more cinematic effect. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it just kind of sparks a few ideas with you. The couple of the images I showed you at the very beginning, that's when I wasn't doing it with my composites and I'll go back into those PSDs and I'll really tune them into what I want to bring out from the image. And I think, for example, the signal flare, the one with the chap holding the flare up, it's one of my favourite composites that just everything works in it for me. I just really like that image. So I'm going to get back into the PSD and I'm going to do the edits with that one and just see how it actually looks compared to the original. Hopefully you get something from it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.